Insidious 2. It's not Insidious 2. No, it's much better. Much better. It was better. It was better than the film I haven't seen. Ah, okay. don't sue on me. Okay, uh, we're gonna start <laughs> off with spoilers. Even though this film's been out in most places for much longer. Yeah. Um, some stuff happened. The best horror movie we've seen in the cinema together, us two, since <laughs> Sinister. I would flat out say this is the best horror movie I've seen in the cinema. Yeah, I have to go with the same. I've seen it's, a lot of It's much cinema. better than. Devil's Dew. Oh God! Or, I sh the shit I took earlier today is better than Devil's Dew. Or the the marked ones, <laughs> or the quiet ones, or the marked quiet ones. These are all films I'm familiar with. Or or the one with Insidious the divot box. Two. The fucking divot box. My tent sweat is better than the divot box thing. The evil inside, the devil inside. I mean, there's so many. They merge together. Most of them are found footage as well. well this is sort of found footage in a re in reverse. One of my yeah. pubic hairs is better than the Conjuring. Conjuring's fucking shit. Okay, so better than good. It was good, yeah. We only have like 27 minutes, so hopefully this won't be too long, so we're going to skip right into spoilers now. Okay, so there's this guy, he's in a psychiatric ward because... Uh, he has hair like yours. He kind of does. He oh, what's your shit? He's me. Well, yeah. Is your, your sister's kind of Gillen. Ah. No, that would you'd be, be even more. In, you'd be even more in favor of incest then. Even more. But you missed the one part where she was in lingerie. Really? Yes! <laughs> oh, fuck off! You walked in and said, what did I miss? I was like, should I just tell him now and break his heart? Uh, well, you know, to be honest, well, she wasn't wearing much less than she wore usually in Doctor Who. She was this, just missing a coat. This is true. And some leggings. I, really I, I really like Karen Gillan. Her accent in this was terrible. It was fucking awful. If only um. they'd said that she went off to stay with relatives in Scotland, it would have been fine. She was in yeah. the adoption system. They could have shipped her to Scotland. They, uh, <laughs> But she, but she says she was there until she was 18, yeah. so... Yeah, so, makes no sense. her accent makes no fucking... She sounds like Christopher Lambert, attempting to be German. Oh my god, he's so hot. <laughs> oh my god, I want to watch Karen Gillan snuggle Christopher Lambert. Not even sexually, just like cuddling. Okay, so there's a mirror which the auction house at the very start says that it was from Balmoral, Scotland. Yeah. Now, Karen Gillan uh, went through the entire history of the thing, and she said it was first discovered in London, and London, then it went yeah. its way to America, and it was only in America from then on. And, and it's it like, <laughs> never returned to Balmoral. It never went like... to Scotland. It was never there at all. So the auction house is making shit up to make it make it more expensive. <laughs> and even if it was, it went it, it went for a measly sum in an auction house for an item that's reputedly supposed to be from Balmoral. Yeah. They go for a mint, not like the Four. price of a car. Yeah, it was sixteen thousand dollars for a four hundred year old mirror. Now here's mm -hmm. my first issue. Karen Gillan is obviously loaded in this. She still owns this huge family house. She mm -hmm. has another large apartment, it's stated. She's engaged to Brandon he's... Ruth from uh, Superman Returns. Yeah, she's yeah. engaged to Clark Kent. And she can afford all this fucking really expensive computer equipment. I mean, they, they she has a monitor room set up, she has Two cameras attached to the walls that are about a thousand dollars each. She has a lot of massive industrial lights. She has about six grand in portable lights. That she has about. special yeah. industrial lights that, for some reason, the bulbs don't heat up. Yeah, because I can just do them bare hands. Take the bulbs. I've used yeah. um she has, filming lights and ow ow and ow, ow, ow. She has ow. two Mac MacBook Pros and two iMacs sitting on the table. I mean, oh. there's at least forty fifty k of equipment sitting around that house that she could afford, but yet. She didn't just buy the mirror. Yeah, she relied on. She spent someone. all of her money on the equipment. I don't. I don't. She. Uh, the plan. Uh, what, Plus, she get... spent all the, a lot of money on on plastic surgery to look like Karen Gillan because her accent didn't make any other sense otherwise. So she said <laughs> she had a weird Scottish accent, so she must look like Karen Gillan. So plastic surgery. Okay. Well, she blew but, all her money in that. But there's this mirror, and it gives. It. It feeds off life force or some shit because it kills plants and animals. And then causes people to have some sort of mild schizoid breakdown, then a yeah. major schizoid breakdown, and kill their families and friends or themselves. And then an even more schizoid breakdown after know. they're dead. Yeah, and then it brings back the. Uh, it, re it did reanimate! No, it brings back it, illusions of the people that it's killed to torment the people that it's currently trying to kill. The thing is, what are the, what are the basis for it doing that? Does it have to have been the one doing it? Or can it just kind of go. Yeah, sure. Well, it might have been that the actual ghosts under its thrall, or there might have just been uh, illusions based on it. It's it's very unclear, but that's a good thing because, yeah. as H.P. Lovecraft said when dealing with the mysterious, never explain. 
That's not an okay. That's not Lovecraft's okay to go and make stuff that doesn't make any fucking yeah. sense. It's just don't explain it. Yeah, don't go into don't fucking metachlorian this shit, but don't make random shit happen for no goddamn reason either. Yeah, yeah. Come up with your own explanation, but don't explain it if you want it to be a decent horror. Yeah, make make that there are set rules to the universe, but don't sit down and be like, I'm going to explain the D twenty system on which our characters actually work to you. I'd love to see a horror movie built based on a D and D game. Not not an actually literal D and D game, but you use a D and D like system to, and you know a bunch of role players to construct the story. <laughs> so it's like my character is going to try and stab the monster. Rules the thing, and they yes. fail. So that part of the script, that person tries to hit it and fails. Oh god! My character rolled a critical one and accidentally chopped their own foot off. Ah, uh, it's in the script now. Yeah, I, the I, story I'm, I'm... would make no sense in a three act structure, but it would be really weird. Lou, Lou actually had that exact situation in a simulated fight in D and D. Yeah. Yeah, uh, one of our housemates is trying to roll a crazy D&D game at the moment, and another one of our housemates decided he was going to base his character off his character in Animal Crossing. His character has negative combat abilities and managed to accidentally kill himself while fighting a tree. <laughs> I did that once. I got better. You stay away from our D&D games. She... <laughs> What? He came out to have a conversation with me last week, and she took his character, stripped him naked, and started beating enemies yeah. with his penis. Yeah. I was told to take over the character, I... and I figured that, you know, the world is actually a giant D&D &D game, and whenever someone goes mad, that's simply another person taking over their player character. So you were making my character go insane? Yes. He yes, got... she is the murderer from this film. He was... it was like, it was going so well! <laughs> like, it was just before my turn, then he got killed. After because stabbing was... an orc with your penis? Yeah. That's called that rape. Then, <laughs> then, then his giant friend was like, hey, hey bro, you're dead. You're dead. And I was like, well, yay. Now, but this film, okay, half of the film is flashbacks to what originally happened, and it's very, very mm. shiny. What happened originally, uh, the dad bought the mirror because he wanted his office to be all cool and antique and shit. Then he, the mum went mental thinking that she was fat and her scars were ugly yeah. and tried to kill the children. So the dad locked, went a bit mental, a little bit mental, locked her up no. in the room. And he went mental just, instantly. Just, 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 just it was like the mother, well, he, 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 he disarmed the mother and then instantly went mental. And chained her up. And <laughs> there was a really effective scene, I thought, and it's like uh, Karen Gillan, the younger, whatever the actress who's yeah. playing the young girl was, was like, Daddy, we're out of food. What's that, princess? Food! It's, it's on, on my, my list. <laughs> Daddy, mommy needs a doctor. What's that, princess? You're crazy! It's on my list. I really wish after she left, I wish she'd be all like, What's that, princess? It's on my list. Just like he's a constant broken record. But they, it really reminded me of The Shining. There's parts of this I would love to sort of dub over with, um, with some legato or something. Some of the music used in The Shining, because it's just so similar. And... Because of that, noticing that halfway through, I spent this entire second half of it thinking that I want to see a sequel to Kubrick's Shining where Danny Torrance goes back to the Overlook and tries to kill the monster or whatever it is that's in there. Obviously fails and dies horribly. The Overlook yeah. itself is the monster. Yeah, I mean, it would be an interesting idea. It would probably completely fail, and because we've already seen The Shining, it would feel like a clip show, probably. Mm. But I think it, in the right hands, it could at least be interesting. Yeah. Mm. So the, our main character starts in a psychiatric hospital because for the criminally insane, because uh, he shot his dad. He shot his yeah, dad. He, and and he, there, even with the physical evidence, he shouldn't well, have gone to a criminally insane place. Yeah. He must have been done for the mirror because because of the mirror story. Because looking at the, the evidence, he tried to strangle people. He killed the mother. The mother's been chained up in the bedroom for a couple yeah. of months. You know, killing uh, the dad. Eating, no one's eating plates. No one's going to get him in trouble for that. So mm -hmm. it must have been the mirror story. For some reason, Karen Gillan baby version didn't tell anyone. And for some reason, this mirror was sold off rather than taken into evidence. I'm pretty sure if you have two kids blaming murders on this uh, mirror, yeah. mirror, it's going to be in an evidence locker somewhere. It's I, I, Even if it does sound all paranormal and supernaturally to the police and they're going, that's bullshit, they're going to investigate it. They have to take every line. Yeah. Yeah. And do you notice they had a hairline fracture on the mirror's edge? <laughs> ah! So... So the Oculus is a rift into a different <laughs> reality. <laughs> oh god, no. Bad joke. I don't I know. Bad. The one thing I was thinking throughout this film is, does nobody ever clean the damn thing? The mirror was just dusty throughout. Dust, perpetual layer of dust. <laughs> well, yeah, if you touch it, then you die. But the illusion people, uh, some of the times... Karen seem... Gillan touched it and died. The guy touched it after he got shot in the head and then died. Everyone who touched that thing died almost immediately afterwards. Apart from the movers. Well, they weren't yeah. touching it. Wait, they were. Maybe, it was maybe covered. They did. 
Maybe they maybe they went off and died elsewhere. There was a nice bit in the au in the back behind the scenes in the auction house where Karen Gillan you know said hello to the mirror, and I really expected the mirror in as Karen Gillan to sort of say hello back, but. Not she was creepy. like, you know, yelling. She was, you know, being all like, I'm going to kick the shit out of you, Mer. In the back then, of an auction house, so it was full of uh, creepy, weird ass statues. So and these shit. statues was... underneath. underneath um, Dust covers? Yeah, they yeah. started moving, and I was like, yeah, leaving then, angels. Yeah, and then that <laughs> random one that appeared out of nowhere. And then yeah, there gone. were three statues whenever she uncovered the mirror. She saw them moving and through the mirror. Yeah. So she went and investigated them, and then whenever somebody else walked into the room, the final statue she didn't uncover disappeared. I thought that was nice. I don't. But our, our main character is released from a psychiatric hospital after he served his time for killing his dad. Is he really the main character? I thought Karen Gillan was. I kind of. I want to it call seems... him the protagonist because he's the only one left alive. It it seems focused. It doesn't mean on anything. It seems focused. The only one on left him. alive in, in Alien Three is like the idiot crazy guy. I don't know, but I want to call bullshit on one bit. They went and get their friend, their dad's friend Bob. Uh, the young girl does. It's like. Yeah, the phones in the house aren't working because this evil monster's not letting us use the phone. Uh, yeah. It can somehow affect electricity. It, it it kills the phones. It kills the electrics ever so often. And whenever you call out, it it fakes a call for you. Like yeah. uh, they try to call a doctor a few times, and it's always the same voice saying, You're, "You should get your dad to call us back." Dad to call back. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> uh, she runs and gets one of their dad's friends who. And I don't know what she told him. It's just like, our mom's sick and we need help. Because the dad's like, yeah, she's just acting out. And he's like, oh, you that's know, fine. I, if she just said... The neighbor must feel really, really bad afterwards. If yeah. she just said something like, dad has our mom chained up by the neck in the bedroom and she's eating pottery. <laughs> she's eating <laughs> so, say, you know, he must feel like... Uh, it's the equivalent of, you know, someone being a, a neighbor of Joseph Fritzl and like, you know, a small child going over to complain about his dad and then he's like, oh, nothing, it's okay. And then a couple of years later, he's like, oh, aren't I kicking myself? Oh, dang mistakes, it. Mis mistakes made. I could have prevented two murders. Oh. And then Bob was still living there. We later in life, this is not again! <laughs> <laughs> but the dad's just like, Fucking bleeding down the wall with the hand hidden behind the door, and it's like, yeah, well, I'll see you for the nine hole on was, Saturday. He's like, yeah, he bets so... he's in that he actually doesn't find out about his death until after he waits at the golf course for ages. But did the guy not even go? Okay, the kid's clearly distressed. That's at least try to get in, and that's who the crazy nails. And... Well, Ugh, the nails. Why didn't the girl, you know, demand that the guy call like the police? She probably did, and he sort of, you know, haggled her down to go in to visit and talk to the dad. It could have even mm -hmm. been like, what I would have done as a student, I, I, I was a smart kid, I would have been like, hey, uh, our, our phones are down, do you mind if I use yours just to check in with this doctor? Sure, kid, go ahead. I'm sorry, you must mm -hmm. get your dad to call back. Yeah, well, well they said that the mirror had an effective radius, they were tracking it by which plants were dead. <laughs> yeah, they were tracking it by, uh, what, it started at 300 feet? 30 feet. 30? Yeah, it was only I don't in, know in the distance. room and into another one. <laughs> I'm sorry, 300 feet, bro, is wider than most houses. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, so, what, it, uh, how does it, uh, it grows, the radius grows the As it more. absorbs, well, it's it was, an it was, it was, so It was sticking at 30 feet. Then, whenever the guy was guilted into letting the dog go, then a few seconds later, it, much it more was gone. So huge, it was like, yeah. we are del I'm deliberately staying small and unnoticeable until the dog goes, and then I'm going to, you know, for fear value, get bigger and stronger. Where yeah. is it that a dog it was fucking with them. But no, uh, the hallucination. The dog didn't survive in the past. Yeah, but dog did. Uh, we like, don't know. Dog, so there were two dogs. dogs. We don't One know died. if the dog did because uh, whenever they cut back that they they didn't leave the house and the, and that they'd moved the cameras. Uh, basically, they they they're under the illusion that they'd went outside and had this big argument in the kitchen and shit. Then whenever they show the replay the video footage, it shows them moving the cameras around so the mirror's not shot and shit. And the dog cage is still there uncovered. It was destroyed though. Mm. So, so the dog could have possible, escaped. Uh, so but it's possible I, dog the dog is actually dead. At actual, at best, one dog was definitely killed in this movie. Per Mason. So, you know, at, you know, at least one dog was definitely killed. And yeah. uh, she lists off the dogs that the other people that have had the mirror owned. But I don't, there's some gruesome shit. Like one of the previous owners of the mirror bit through a power cable. Oh, God, yeah, that, that photo. Ow. It's kind of grisly. Yes. Yeah, so did we ever get confirmation of whether or not she actually killed her fiance? Oh yeah, he, he obviously did. Yeah, yeah, she cause, you know, because remember, he, you see him as the the creepy mirror eyed people. Although it's, I suppose they could have still messed with perception, and he never came. And uh, it's possible that he she didn't kill him, but she well, probably did. It, it can do relieve. 
mess the, with any perception. But the using the looking at the difference between regular shot and like electronic, you know, looking at something, it was done very well in this. It reminded me of a bit of this great shot in House on Haunted Hill, the 1990s remake of the 50s version, where this woman is like going through and she's looking at, you know, documenting this thing, yeah. and then she she's looking at through the camera at, at the live version of it, and she sees ghosts, and then she looks up and she doesn't. There's nothing there. Yeah. And then she looks down, and she's moving it around it perfectly in time with this obviously previously recorded shot. And then she she she's like looks back, and the ghosts all start to to look at her, mm -hmm. and come towards her. And she's constantly looking back and forth between you know nothing and them. Yeah. It's timed perfectly. What is that game called? Because that sounds very like the mechanic in it. Oh God, Fiddle Frame. No, the one you were playing that you gave up on because you were too scared. Oh God, no. Um. With the camera and the... I forget what it was called, it was so scary. Locker's OP, but so scary. There's this game he was playing the other day in our house, and basically oh, you're God. going to an abandoned mental asylum and shit's going down, but you've got this and, camera to use and, night vision. And the giant, crazy guy who doesn't have a jaw kept coming out of the abyss of darkness and killing me. Yeah, But no, it, it was like at points, uh, looking through camera was the only way to get the real view get, of what was going yeah, on. Yeah, otherwise you were Although at one, at one point... It, the two different camera monitors were showing Karen Gillan two, two different, very different things. I think that was to show us that, yeah, she can even manipulate what you're seeing through the lenses. Yeah, well, we know that because remember she's looking through the camera and she's like, ah, there's there's no plate or pottery and ah, uh -huh, I'm safe. And then she kills Michael. Back in I said on the hill, it's not a very good film, but that was one of the good bits. Um, but then there's the bit at the end when the guy, he decides to set the kill switch going. I thought the point of a kill switch was that it will go if you don't press the thing. No, I think he was just uh, undoing the timer, like taking away the last five it's minutes. It's like, why did he bother? Yeah. Well, I think he just wanted it. I really over. think that he... He should have... He, 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 I think he, 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 it was his own fault. If he just, you know, walked off and then he didn't touch it and then, you know, Karen Gillan could have committed suicide by a hug by herself. <laughs> That was like suicide to a hug. That's really creepy. But no, seriously, the police at the end of the film, they, they have the footage of the last five minutes where he killed Karen Gillan. Got, Surely they're going to dig through the rest of the footage and see exactly what exactly And decide that on. they were both insane and they probably deserved it. Yeah, yeah. The police don't like insane people like me. That's... Because based on the footage, you've got the claims and you've got like, they're, they're not going to see anything supernatural no they're just gonna see like like the these bit, two people in this right my, my favorite bit in the film was whenever they were having an argument in the kitchen and then they walk into the room with the mirror and all the camera equipment set up and the two cameras are looking directly into each other's lenses and there's two dead plants on the floor and the dog's cage is undisturbed yeah. and then they look at the. it was destroyed no it was it was no, exactly no, no, where they no, left yeah, it, it was, uh, before it was he let the dog out yep. so uh they look through the footage of the two cameras on the walls and they see themselves having exactly the same dialogue in exactly the same way, but just moving, but they're moving, all the, stuff, moving yeah. the cameras about and upsetting the room. So, so the police are going to see this shit and then they're going to see them being like, my God, we weren't even in this room. And there's another bit where he's like, runs outside the front door and tries to make a phone call and obviously the ghost in the mirror is stopping him from making the phone calls. Yeah. And he's like, it's just sitting. he's sitting at the front door and she's like, where do you think you are? And he's like, I'm outside. And he's like, she's like, no, you're sitting in the front door. And he's like, when the fuck did I get here? Yeah, I was wondering if we were inside. Like, you just oh, assume they were insane. Inside. And then they'll be all like, yeah, oh, someone else can buy this and we'll have a sequel. See? Most... Don't be fine with a sequel. This, this is, a, it's a, if done competently, we could have an entire franchise yeah. of films with a very impersonal sort of thing. It's just like, this cursed object. This is like, uh... It's this, this is this should have been a Stephen King story because you know mm. it's just an evil mirror. Yeah, it reminds me a bit of 1408 as well. Okay. The ending doesn't make any sense though. That uh, yacht anchor would have just blasted straight through Karen Gill. It wouldn't. Have, it would have hit the mirror anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Would've... There would have been no. It, 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 they have this uh, kill switch. It's it's a twenty pound yacht anchor with uh, another twenty pounds of bell bars on a. Uh, Seven foot swinging arm. That's forty pound weight on a seven foot swing arm. That's going to be going. Oh, nine point two meters per second square. That's going to be going quite fast with quite a lot of force whenever it hits yeah. you. She also sharpened it. Uh, That's cool. This is apparently stopped by Karen Gillan's yeah. neck, which, if you've ever seen her, isn't that thick. She is uh, like well, a human bird hybrid. It's shown to go straight through the wall, clearly. <laughs> like, even when it's the normal break, but that's implying that because of the break, it had done that previously, so yeah, her it, it, it head should have just went... It, it, it should have cut right through and broke the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you've seen the Amityville, Amityville Horror movie sequel, which has the evil lamp, 
This is like a good version of inanimate object horror. An evil... I need to see this. <laughs> Another anime, Amityville Horror sequel, has an evil dollhouse of the original house. The only... Uh, I've seen both the, the original and the remake of the Amityville Horror, and they were the first horror films I ever watched. Have you seen any of the sequels? There's like I, ten yeah, of them. I've heard they're terrible, so I haven't bothered. Uh, it depends. Some better than others. Mm. I don't know. The, the remake had an Indian hanging by his nipples in the basement, and that just kind of freaked me out a little bit whenever I was like 12. Now it would turn mm. you on. I don't know, Indians. What's wrong with Indians? I don't know, the hanging by the nipples is okay, but, you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, a slight window into what you're into. Hanging by nipples. <laughs> a slight window? <laughs> What's the backlog, bro? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, she, uh, the murder makes you go crazy and kill your family. So it's pretty comparable to the Amnival Horror. Mm. Uh, having... Why... You know what we should have done for this entire vlog? What? We should have had, a, a, you know, like five minutes of conversation and then worked out what the next thing one of us was going to say and then swap chairs, swap seats, and oh. then just continue on with the person who's saying what there is, continue the conversation for another five minutes and then do that every so often. Hey. Without without reference. Actually, there's one. Maybe these are still hallucinating from earlier. Maybe I'm still not here. Maybe I'm the mirror. Maybe I'm telling you this is a plot that you'll not. I doubt you're a mirror because it. I'm not carrying a mirror around. With I'm me. sorry if you're a mirror. There and, like, if you're you three three else. if you're an evil mirror <laughs> and you're fitting in my car, you're almost definitely from IKEA. This guy knows. <laughs> Plus, you know, we played ski ball with you. I don't think the mirror was that good at ski ball. I suck. At Admittedly, ski ball. you lost. I suck at <laughs> ski ball, but but uh, I haven't bought me a little slinky. Yeah, because the the bowling the the movie ball that we go to also has an arcade attached that allows you to win tickets. <laughs> win, 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 win. Where's all my money? So, oh gone? yeah, the. <laughs> The Kitty Sackoff was quite good as the mother, although I was told, you know, she was, you know, freaky and stuff, so I was expecting mm. some, like, Carrie's mother shit going on, but, uh, no, she, she just, just, she was a dog <laughs> occasionally. She's really um, creepy. But then the, the dad is, he's the most disinterested psychopath, you know, version of Jack Torrance ever. He's just like, uh, I guess I gotta kill you. <laughs> uh, I guess I gotta commit suicide now. Yeah. Daddy, we went to. No, we went I'm not to, into this at all. You told us not to go into mommy's room, but she's been chained up in there for like a month, and there's no food. So we went in to tell mommy there's no food, and she's chained up and eating <laughs> eating the pottery and ripping her hair out, and there's teeth all over the floor and bits of flesh that she's ripped off herself. Yeah. You disobeyed me. I told you not to go in that room. You're grounded for you're, life. You're grounded. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he's like, mm, mm, mm. The, the here's most, Johnny. <laughs> The most serious thing the I'm mirror makes gonna, me do, you're grounded. I'm not going to hurt you, Katie. I'm pretty sure off. abuse and murder is more serious than grinding your kids. I'm not going to. I'm not going to hurt you, Katie Sackoff. I'm just going to bash your brains in. Bash them right the fuck in. Mm. Surprise, motherfucker. Danny, Danny, I'm going to get you. My name is crazy person number one. You yeah, but I'm at least quoting The Shining. I'm trying not to. <laughs> My name is Karen Gillen. You're a murderer. Prepare to die. It's... <laughs> you killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> I just say, I don't know if this was deliberate, or the actor was just, you know, so dedicated to playing a disinterested psychopath, but it's a brave and interesting choice. Yeah, uh, it's creepy. No, just... Daddy, you've got to act. This entire That's film has a really nice, creepy vibe yeah, to it. It wasn't even a case of being creepy. It was a case of just like, ah, I guess i got to walk and say lines <laughs> and have emotions and stuff. It's such an imposition. The kid actors <sighs> were fantastic. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, they were good. I don't know where I recognize the, the young, well, I don't know his name, the boy. From your porn folder. Thomas. Oh, my. I, is that his name? Yeah. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but <laughs> well, it's late. They all called okay. him Tombo. Tombo, that's it. This it's is... short for Tomboy. Oh. He actually grew up to be Karen Gillan. <laughs> in, in, a, in a twisted. Well, they talked about his transition whenever he was leaving the mental institution. Yeah, they did. They mentioned transitioning. So, oh God. So you know, this is like he, um, he uh, became... this is like this is like intermedia all over again. He became Karen Gillan. <laughs> I thought it would be funny if they got the actress for young Amelia Pond from Doctor Who. Okay, Lynn Blackwood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
But, you know, she's terrible. She's much older now, though. She wasn't terrible. She was brilliant. I think she was better than Karen Gillan. I wish she was in the, the TARDIS the entire time. She was fucking great. I loved Caitlin Blackwood. Okay. Although, you know... The Doctor doesn't need a 12-year-old companion. He had a daughter. He had a granddaughter. Yes. Alleged uh, yeah. granddaughter. Going by the expanded sounding universe. Mm. Dude, classic Doctor Who fan here, therefore the Doctor's a fucking sexual. Classic Doctor Who fan? Uh, I'm sorry, you're a classic Doctor Who expert. You actually have a series of guide videos on it. Yeah, I'm just saying. So, Doctor Who, there is no official Doctor Who canon, there, and, and I will defend the, he, the, the canon idea, the individual canon idea that the Doctor and Susan are not traditional grandfather granddaughter. No, oh, he loomed her. No, no, no. She was the granddaughter of the other, who was born before the Gallifreyans were cursed by the Sisterhood of Karn and therefore had to use the looms. The Doctor is the reincarnation of the other, and when and he went back into the dark times of Gallifrey, where he was recognized by her as a reincarnation of her grandfather. It's very simple. Yes, it's not at all. Good. It's, it's not, not at all a way to get. It's not at all a way to get round the idea that the idea of the Doctor having sex is really squicky for us classic Doctor Who fans. Mm. Well, there's two hearts. Does he have two penises? That was a joke made in the show by Russell T uh, Davies. I'm aware. I'm sorry, have you not be, is it been on fanfiction.net? All the OCX Doctor? The doctors do not have sex. It's all ten. <laughs> Fuck ten. Not ten. in the sex way. All, all ten. <laughs> With OC. <laughs> Fuck Dargo? Yes! But you think the Doctor should not have a 12 year old companion? Excuse me! Have you seen a fix with Sontarans? No. The sixth Doctor teams up with Gareth Jenkins, this young boy who won like a competition. So he got to film a scene with the Doctor. So he played played himself in a, like a replica of the Doctor outfit in the TARDIS fighting against Sontarans. And it was fucking brilliant because the Doctor's like, Gareth Jenkins, he's really important in the future of Earth. And the Sontarans are like, we recognize Gareth Jenkins. And from our future history, he will defeat our Sontaran invasion in like the year 2005, which was 20 years from then. It's like, we should destroy him and our future victory will be assured. And then the Doctor's like, you can't kill Gareth, he's just a boy. And he's like, yes, but Gareth is so amazing. But then the Doctor's like hiding behind Gareth and everything and, and, be, and almost worshipping him. I really wanted a season with the Doctor, you know, being followed around by this small boy who literally cannot act and is using idiot boards and can't express emotions. But everywhere he goes, he discovers, whether it's the far reach of the universe, the past, the future, this kid is destined to do something important there in the future. Right, enough about Doctor Who. We have I zero, want... We have zero tip left. Did I you want try that the to happen. That what? would have been amazing. The film was good. Go see it. Good film. <laughs> Sontar and Stratagem had a soldier that helped the Doctor roughly 20 years later and his surname was Jenkins. I don't know if it was a reference or not. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Go see Oculus, it's it really good. good. Bye. <laughs>